Jojo Bizarre Adventure Nation. When I saw this volume on Indigo, I was just really excited for some reason because I don't, I did at the time, I didn't own a manga as you know old as this. Basically, I do own Master Kitty, which I believe was also made in the 80s. But this manga was just something I really had to own just because from seeing the cover and even seeing the size of it, the fact that this will be my first, no, this will be my second ever hardcover manga I've ever owned. This is basically 255 pages, has 45 colored pages, and it comes in at 8.2 by 5.75 inches and also 1 inch as well. And the fact that it has so many color pages just mean the manga is just going to be absolutely beautifully detailed. And when I saw this manga for the first time, I was like... The, the style was basically took a page out of Fist of the North Star. And if you're aware of what Fist of the North Star is, it's basically um, an anime that has just really jacked up characters. Since it was made in the older times of the era of muscles such as Schwarzenegger and Stallone, obviously they wanted to make a character, you know, Hirokawa basically wanted to make a character that would basically, or Hirohiko basically, sorry not Hirokawa, Hirohiko basically wanted to make, you know, characters that obviously would evolve during the time since obviously the 86 or the 80s was when this first release. So this basically released in America at February 24th, 2015, but the manga in Japan was released in 1986. So this was around maybe like 20 plus years ago. Obviously, they wanted to release part one to the US with newly drawn cover art, hard cover. When I saw this, I was like, yes, I really wanted to get into the JoJo series. So I picked up the first volume. I read it for the first time. I was just really pleased. But reading the second time, when you read the second time, sometimes you notice know details that you don't really notice for the first time. And I noticed the fact that obviously Jonathan Joestar and Dio Brand are basically two polar opposites. They basically contrast of each other. Dio is basically the evil person, basically a guy who's raised under a bad roof. And Jonathan Joestar, or Jojo, I will refer to him as for now because obviously people call him Jojo and it's a lot easier. By the way, if you wonder what Jojo stands for, it stands for Jonathan Joestar. I was wondering, what does Jojo stand for? Why do they call it Jojo Bizarre Adventure? It stands for Jonathan Joestar. So obviously, we refer to him as Jojo for now on. And obviously, even I want to talk about the cover. I want to talk about all these other, you know, minor details before I get off to the main meat of the review because the review is going to be a wee bit longer than my normal ones. So obviously, we can see the cover being hard cover, as I mentioned before, 25 pages. And obviously, you know, the entire blood type aspect of their newly drawn cover art as well. We can see from the top, if the light is not blocking, we can obviously see the heart. We can see, you know, Speedwagon's mask, not mask, but his hat. The he Speedwagon will eventually, you know, come later into the volume. I'll talk about him as well. And then we turn the back, we can see Dio Brando, the guy in the pink hair, and Danny the dog as well, Jojo's dog. We can see him right here, and we can see his ear, you know, we can see Dio Brando's ear and having the three moles as well, which also is very interesting in the cover as well. Obviously, these little, you know, little circle things, obviously, that has the items, are basically things that are very important in the volume. I did not notice that until I analyze the cover very further. And this is basically bigger than the conventional manga. So, Magi is right here. Mangi Volume 5, and let's compare Jojo right here. If you can compare it properly, we can clearly see that, you know, Jojo is very much bigger. This is this is 191 pages, and this is 255. This even features a special interview from, obviously, Hirohiko himself, saying how he came up with the first design for the first Jojo. So let's talk about the story now that I've talked about the minor details, which, obviously, I want to mention these details because sometimes knowing the size of a book can be really important because, obviously, in inches, obviously, you can find them out in centimeters yourself. By going to Google and translating all stuff, I will put all the dimensions and all the stuff I featured in the description below in terms of pages, all the other details, all the blah 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 details that really not a lot of people give a shit about unless you're a collector. It's good to know the dimensions, sizes. So let's talk about the story. So basically, the setting of the story takes in UK London, basically being UK being British, and obviously taking around. And first, it talked about the 12th to the 16th century of the Aztec people of the sun who basically made this stone mask which I'm going to be using the thumbnail basically the stone mask would grant the person who wear immortality and the power to dominate to rule and basically make the person a ruler the stone mask requires the blood of a person you, not you require the person but I think the mask requires some a, a person's blood and also your own brain power as well obviously being at the back it features you know basically the mask itself having basically you know, connecting to your brain as well and obviously the Joestar house being right there Basically, you know, they would give the power to the Aztec people of San Mede in the 12th to 16th century, and the tribe decided to rule the world by using that power of the mask, but they eventually disappeared of no trace of the history, but the mask was the only thing available. And the, now let's flash forward to the 19th century, where basically the Joseph family decided to buy the mask after the extravagant. Basically, after archaeologists decided to dig out the mask in the 18th century, 
the Joestar family decided to buy the mask, and then obviously during a rainy day, their carriage crashed, and then obviously Joestar's wife died, basically, you know, the wife died, but Jonathan basically survived the crash along with his father as well. And then Dara Brando, basically Dio Brando's father, found him there, and obviously he was trying to stick all this stuff, because a nobleman is basically a person who's really rich at the time, and people were starving, people, you know, obviously, you know, people on the verge of death, whatever, they would steal from, obviously, these noble people, and basically, you know, Dar Brando basically stole, you know, rings, clothes, everything else, you know, he had no morals, no honor, no dignity, no pride, no nothing, he would just steal from people, he didn't really care about anything else, but Joe Star, obviously, the father took it the wrong way, because he thought he was going to save him, which makes me just really sad, because, obviously, we know, as a viewer, or the reader, I call it viewer, because I'm reviewing the anime, we call it uh, the reader, that we know, that he's not trying to see. He's trying to take all his shit and just run away. That just makes me absolutely pissed off. But obviously, his honor and dignity there just makes him a really nice person. I love, you know, Joe Star's father. I love Joe Star. I love Jojo as well. The kids are just absolutely, you know, the loyal, they're honorable, they're gentleman type people. Obviously, you know, said, you know, you tried to save me as well, you know. What can a Joe Star do for you? A Joe Star always pays his favors as well. So he gave him money to start with a bar. But obviously, Dara eventually, his, Dara, his bar just basically, you know, just went bankrupt. His wife died. Now he's on the verge of his deathbed. Basically, he tells, you know, Dio, hey, go over to, you know, Joe, John, uh, Jonathan, Joe Star's house. Basically, whatever, go to Mr. Joe Star's house. They will educate you. They will teach you to be the best, whatever. Be the richest person you can be, you know, use people, whatever. So, obviously, Dio's going to basically, you know, get the Joe Star, you know, basically, you know, fortune, whatever. He's going to leave the family. He doesn't really care about anybody else. He's just going to milk people for all of their worth as well. And obviously, he went to the you know, Joe Star House, basically, you know, he's trying to, you know, basically psychologically destroy, of you know, Jojo, because he's basically trying to take his friends away, his love life away, he's trying to kill his dog, he just did absolutely all of these horrible things as well, it just shows he's the villain type character, he just, he's absolutely an interesting and intricate villain, I really do like the fact that he's really smart with everything else, and just seeing how his character in the seven year time skip, basically, they were 12 years old during the time as well, so obviously, even explain the aspect of the 19th century, basically the 19th century, which is being around the 1880s. Now obviously, when you flash forward to the 19th century, this was the eight. This was 1881, and then they have a time skip, which is 1887, when they're obviously graduating from university. I believe they're around. How old were they? They were around. Um, what's what's two plus? Oh, they were 19 years old after the time skip. So they were about to graduate from high school. And obviously, you know, they're done graduation. They're about to take the fortune. Everything else. Obviously, Jojo grew up after losing his dog Danny as well. Just it was absolutely tragic just the way things occurred in his vomit. Just you feel really horrible for Jojo because just everything that happens to him is he doesn't deserve any of this. Obviously, because you know he's a bit weaker than Dio. Dio just wants to get the fortune and obviously just be the most powerful person in the world and just keep using people for their own worth as well. But it's just awesome to see how Jojo really wants to be a gentleman, but how his character evolves throughout the entirety of the obviously the chapter and the entirety of the chapters. And there uh, there are about 11 chapters in this manga, by the way, if you're wondering, because most mangas have around 10 chapters. This has an extra 11 chapter as well, and I believe one chapter was completely in color as well. It's very common for manga in the 80s to be cut because Master Keaton, another 80s manga own, is in color for a chapter. In the 80s, they apparently had a lot more color chapters because I guess, you know, they were going to take the time to do that, or they had the materials back then to do that as well. Just seeing how Jojo's characters evolved in terms of physical appearance, but how, you know, obviously, you know, he was very weak to deal at first, but eventually, when you see seven years later, he's obviously learning techniques, he's learning, basically using Dio as a way to move forward from his life, just absolutely brilliant. It's just seeing how his father, even obviously, is getting sick and is dying, just like how, you know, Dara Brando started dying as well. And seeing how Jojo had to go all the way to London and face against Speed Wagon, how the fact that he really cared for his father and he cares for other people as well. He's basically a nobleman in heart. He's basically a gentleman in mind and in actually, you know, appearance as well. You know, he wants to act like a gentleman always. And that is why I absolutely love this character. But Dio's character is actually worth mentioning because of fact, because he basically became the exact opposite of Jojo. He became more of his father, basically. You know, he would start to use people, he would start to drink alcohol as well, he would start to abuse people, he basically you know, start to slap females, basically, you know, see Jojo's girlfriend, Arena, basically, obviously, he would hit Arena, whatever, one time doing the thing and call her bitch, basically, when he was 12 years old. So that just shows you how he was raised as well. Obviously, the stone mask is the main aspect of it because thanks to the stone mask, they're going on a bizarre adventure. So basically, that is my review for Jojo Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood Part 1 Volume 1. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate the video, if you, didn't, if you did not like the video at all, if you thought it was slow paced, 
dislike the video, opinions are welcome about the manga volume. Be sure to pick up the volume, I'll be linking basically Amazon links, book depository links, which basically means you can get free shipping worldwide, Indigo links, whatever links I can find about this volume, please pick up this volume. I do advise you pick up this volume, it is absolutely detailed, it's amazing. And if you love manga that from the 80s or love older mangas, you will really, really enjoy this. This manga volume isn't the best. The second volume is a lot better in my opinion. But this, you know, sets up all of the characters as well. And the second part of it, after chapter you know, it gets 4 or 5, it gets just really, really detailed and gets more into the whole, you know, vampire supernatural aspect of the show as well. So, well, not the show, but it of the manga. Excuse me. So, subscribe, like, favorite, do whatever you like. That's your choice. I'll see you guys later. Farewell.